Hello, this is Rochelle Agatha, and this is the lecture on Assignment 6, which is um, several financial functions, which I'm going to go over and give you some examples. The first one is the PMT function, which is used to calculate payments for, for loan amortizations or if you just want to figure out a, a payment based on an interest rate and a term. I've typed the formula in here so you can see what the parameters are that you need. Several of these formulas that we're going to talk about use the same information in different order and, and for different purposes. So the PMT formula uses a rate, a number of periods, a present value, a future value, and then a type. The next one we're going to go over is rate, where you actually find the rate when you know the number of periods, the payment, the present value, or the future value and what they call a guess. And here I've typed out what all the different descriptions are for these. So you can um, read these. I'll load this inside of Blackboard, inside of the assignment like I did on the previous assignment. Um, but as you can see, the payment, if you're doing like a savings problem um, and you want to find out the amount you need to deposit, the number of periods is the number of periods, not necessarily the number of years. The present value, if you're doing a savings problem, um, the amount you have in the bank at the beginning of a period. A future value is the amount you want to earn at the end of a period. And then this type is a one or a zero, one being payments at the beginning of the period and zero at the end of the period. So that, def that will help define the interest. The present value, you once again, you have the similar formula with this rate, the number of periods, a payment, or a future value. The future value is optional. It is the future value of payments, and it's a um, if the parameter is omitted, the PV function assumes the future value to be zero. And then the future value, same thing. You're looking at the same different qualifiers. And um, so we're going to go through, and in assignment six, you're going to use all of these to calculate so that I want you to get a really good picture of how to use them because they're really important in, in accounting. And I'm throwing in the if error for you because lots of times when you go to do a formula and you get that yicky old div error or some other error, you can use the if error that will actually throw something else out for you so that you can keep using formulas. And basically it allows a value to be placed if there is an error in the formula. So when you open up assignment six, there's lots of parts. Once again, this is a more complicated assignment. You're going to start out and you're going to do um, what I call a loan amortization schedule. And I'm going to have you create several different scenarios working with information that I give you. And I'm going to show you how to lay it out and do one for you. The loan amortization schedule uses the PMT function. And you need, therefore, you need an original loan amount, a number of ter a term, and a rate. So when you read through this, I'm going to have you do it three times. I'm going to show you how to do the first one, which really should help you out on all of them. Okay, follow the directions very carefully in this assignment and put everything where I tell you to put it, and you'll be just fine. So in loan number one, which is right here, I, I give you the information. So you're going to come in here and you're going to create a loan amortization schedule, which will be... Um, very similar to this, however, you're going to have your header at the top like I tell you to in the, in the instructions. You're going to put your original loan amount in, you're going to put your term, and you're going to put your rate, which is provided inside of the assignment. Then you're going to calculate the payment, and I'm going to hover over this so you can see how I did it. And remember, if you type this in a different spot, your formula won't be exactly the same, but in, but in mine it's just typed at the top. So what it's saying is, it's saying take the payment is D4 divided by D12, and then it's looking at D3 times 12, and then D2. So, so look at this a minute and then ask yourself, what am I doing with this times 12 and this divide by 12? Well, let's go back over to the lecture where I talk about inside of these functions, everything has to be within the same period. So if your interest and your payment is calculated monthly and you have an annual interest rate, you need to make sure you divide that interest rate into months. And if your term is a month, you need to make sure your interest rate and your term are the same. 
So over here, here's your annual interest rate and here's your term in years, but you're making monthly payments like, like a typical house payment or a car payment. So when you come inside of here, you see that I took the annual rate divided by 12 and I took the terms, the term of years times 12. So I'm, I'm in, I've taken it down to the same base, if you will. The PMT always um, derives a negative. So since it's ugly like that, I tell you to come on down and make a nice little loan amortization schedule where you just link your payment up to where you calculate it. Notice I put the minus sign in front so my payment doesn't look ugly. It just looks like a payment. Then you're going to come over and you're going to say, okay, that's fine and dandy. That's my payment amount, but what's my principal? Well, my principal is the difference between my payment and my interest. Okay, that makes sense. My interest is the interest rate off the, the principal balance. So I'm taking the principal balance times the interest rate, which is annual, divided by 12 to give my monthly interest. So my principal paid is my payment less my interest. Notice that my balance goes down. So if you're making a car payment or a mortgage on your house, this is what's happening. This is a very useful tool to create. Basically, I'm telling you, take this loan schedule down to the end of the term. Well, 15 years is 180 months. So we go all the way down to the bottom, and notice it ends up zero. So I want you to use the, the tools in your head that you've learned from this class so far and figure out how to copy all this stuff down and get yourself to zero at the bottom. And I'm going to check your formulas and make sure all's um, good. I'm going to show you the second line just to give you a little bit of a heads up here. I took the, the beginning principal balance less the principal payment to get me my new principal balance. And that's what you need to do so that your interest payment, notice your interest payment goes down over time. When all said and done, you can kind of look at the bottom and you can say, really, what did, what did I pay over time for interest? Well, to borrow at a 2.8%, I paid $27,690 of interest just, you know, and that's what the bank gets for loaning me money. And that wasn't part of the problem. I'm just giving you that in, in retrospect to what we're doing. Follow along, do loan one, loan two, and loan three. Okay, then in part C, you're going to create a new sheet called rate. And this is where you're going to start using the, the different functions that I already went over. So in the rate, it says you're borrowing $25,000 for 10 years with a payment of $450 per month. Find the annual rate. So the key here is having that the term and the rate in the same period, like I previously mentioned. So you are going to set up a little box, like I tell you here, in a, in a table that goes on cell B5 to B8. So come over here, put your name in here. There's B5, there's B8. You're going to type in what I give you. And then you're going to come up with the rate. And I'm going, to, I'm going to give you this one so that you can do the rest by yourself. Notice that E7 is the term. Okay, so I take the term times 12 because the term is in years. Then I have E6, which is a payment by month. So I'm in, I'm in months now. Notice I have a minus in front of that because the payment derives a minus. You need to put the minus in so it reflects the, um, the change in that. E5 is the present value, and then I have that zero and that one. So oh, I'm going to go back to the, the payment um, definition in a minute. But here I want you to see then um, what I'm doing to get the, at the rate at the end, then I must multiply it back by 12 when all said and done. So I, because I asked you for an annual rate, so let's walk through this again. The term is in years, the payment is in months. I have a present value, but I want an annual rate of return. That comes out to be 18.4. I'm going to check all of your formulas, so this is a freebie here. Going back over to the lecture, notice the payment. Here's what I was doing inside that formula. And you can see what, um, what all the different things we were finding and what needs to be negative and what doesn't. So really study this. I don't want to show you the rest of them because I want you to struggle a little and try to figure this out yourself, okay? You have a couple of weeks to get this done. Um, you're going to do the 
the payment, then you're going to copy that sheet and you're going to come over and you're going to calculate here's a rate and here's a rate. So you're doing two different rate ones with varying information, different scenarios. Then you're going to do a future value and then you're going to do a second future value. So they're really fun and once you learn these, these three different kinds of calculations, you can use these for everything. The very last thing in this lecture is how to use, do the if error. So I tell you, create this little table and you're going to solve for sales per item on hand. And I'm not going to actually show you this one, I'm going to show you an example of what if error does. Okay, here's an example where I said I have total student revenue by program and number of students by program. And then I say, what's the tuition per student? So I come and I show you, it's a basic calculation, revenue divided by students. Notice this one comes up with a div because you can't divide by zero. So what I do is I come over and I use the if error. And I say, if error, with my formula, the same formula that's here, D4 divided by D5, G4 divided by G5, and I say, if that returns an error, I want to see the word missing student data. Whatever you want the error to return, put in quotes, okay, so um, I wanted it to say missing student data. Let's say I wanted it to say um, alert. Let's say alert. Or if I wanted it just to say failure. Oops, I don't type very well. It would say that. So it's a really nice functionality because that's ugly and the, the eye is just going to look at that and go, okay, I divided by zero. But here it will cause you to really look at the formula. Once again, um, go through all of these. Take your time. You get a couple of weeks. If you have any questions, send me an email prior to the day before it's due so I can help you. Make sure when you send me questions, you must send me your Excel file with your questions in it, highlighted in yellow. You cannot just say help. You need, to, you need to lead me to where you are so I can continue on for you. It doesn't do you any good for me just to tell you the answer. And this stuff's fun, and I would just spend a lot of time on it and, and um, get it down on your own. Um, if you have any questions, send me an email. Thanks.